everyone, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology Tutor. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back my cooperative, wonderful husband, Kevin. Hello, folks. He's agreed to join me again for another fun video. I really enjoyed filming the last one, testing my husband in biology, so we decided to come again. After all, I thought it was very educational, well-being, entertaining, so we're back here Actually, for part it went, two. it went pretty well. Yeah, he enjoyed it. So I said, why not come and do another one? And we're going to have a little fun twist to it. So if you want to see this fun twist and see how he does in part two, keep watching. Stay tuned. Well, here is the fun twist to part two of this test. Every incorrect answer he gets, he is going to have to drink some cayenne pepper water it's a hot twist <laughs> a very hot twist yes so no worries folks cayenne pepper is very healthy it provides very many benefits to the body so it can help boost immunity and we definitely need that in this time with COVID. For sure, for sure. It helps improve digestion, blood circulation, even helps get rid of like mucus on the back of your throat. Yeah, so if you have a lot of sinus problems, yep. you can use this. Put in some hot water and it'll work fine. Yes. So anyways, moving on from that promotion of cayenne pepper, let's get started. So we have two rounds to this test. So in round one, we're going to be doing biological terms and in round two, we're going to be doing true and false. So, remember, every time you get something wrong, as in very far away from the correct answer, it's bottoms up. Cayenne pepper drink. All right, so let's go. <clears throat> Your first word is chromosome. 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 Okay. Is this a cell? It is not no. a cell, but it is found in the cell. It's found in the cell. So what comes to mind when you hear the word chromosome? Have you heard of it before? Yes, definitely I've heard of chromosome before. I'm pretty sure No. Will. Hmm. Let's see. You say it's found in the cell. No. I'm trying to remember what exactly it does. Okay, folks. He's but taking too long. <laughs> but it's found in the cell, so half mark. So a chromosome is a thread-like structure found in the nucleus of the cells. So it's actually the genetic material that will be found in our cells that will contain the DNA and determine oh, our characteristics. Oh, DNA. Yeah. So it's technically a combination of protein and DNA that forms the, the chromosomes. So think genetic material. So it determines your characteristics, your mm, beautiful eyes, geez. your hair. Oh, yeah. I should have guessed it. Had something to do with so, genetics. <clears throat> Wondering if I should have put in more cayenne pepper. It's hard enough as it is, but <laughs> I was just wondering if, why she chose this type of glass. It's not a celebration, but I think she's trying to add some sort of, sort of reverse psychology on me to make me think I am not drinking anything hot. Well, who knows? It might work in my favor. <laughs> Anyways, on to word number two. <clears throat> chloroplast. Chloroplast. So what comes to mind when you hear chloroplast? Is this a part of a plant cell? Mm-hmm. I cannot remember what it's possible for, but I know it's part of a plant cell. Chloroplast. Hmm. Part of a plant cell. So remember we oh. did in the previous video that word photosynthesis, photosynthesis. Right, photosynthesis, which involves the sun and the plants. Right. So the chloroplast is the organelle that actually absorbs the sunlight energy mm -hmm. because it contains a green pigment called chlorophyll so that oh, absorbs the sunlight energy mm -hmm. and then allows the plant to carry out photosynthesis so that is what the chloroplast is so it's an organelle found in plant cells 
responsible for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. <laughs> All right, so mm -hmm. should he have to drink? Hmm. I think I should get a half mark this time around. I'll, I'll let you slide because he recognized that it was part of the let it slide the plant. So you get off this thing. Anyways, the next word, decomposer. Decomposer. Um, this might be a really wild guess. Is this a part? Is this does this involve the body getting rid of waste? Well, or, that is incorrect. Or <laughs> well, he is correct. It's getting rid of something. Something. It, but you're correct by saying waste because de 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 right decomposition. You can't save yourself now. <laughs> I should be able De to redeem myself. Decomposers are organisms, usually microorganisms like bacteria and fungi, Fungus. that actually feed off of dead material, waste matter like urine and feces. So they will convert the material in all that waste matter and dead material and basically recycle the nutrients in the environment. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> so since I am not getting these level three questions, because we definitely skip level two, because these are a little difficult. Enough with the long talk. Drink her up. Here we go. Chug a little, chug a Definitely hitting a spot. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, let's. I move can on. see tonight I'll be going to sleep with clear sinuses. There you go. <laughs> All right. So your next word is. Nephron. Nephron. Oh nephron. Mm, nephron. <laughs> is this part of a neuron? <laughs> I thought. Well, you know, nephron and neuron are very often mixed up with students. Well, that's why nephron neuron. I thought they were cousins. Cousins. Anyways, a nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. So this is the structure that will actually make the urine, produces the urine in the kidney. So there are like thousands of these nephrons in one kidney. Mm -hmm. So they're responsible for making the urine. So they pretty much filter out the blood. So mm -hmm. remember we talked about the kidneys, the kidneys and the functions. Covering, yeah, so the, the nephron filters the blood, mm -hmm. gets rid of all the waste, any excess water, so that is how the urine is produced, the oh. nephrons. Nothing to do with neurons, folks. As I said, they thought they were related. Sense. They thought they were first or second cousins or maybe even third, but hey. So on that note, okay. You managing well? <laughs> I am managing Handling it? as good as I can. Okay, I probably needed to put a little more. But anyways, your next word is placenta. Placenta. This has to do with um, something pertaining to new birth. There's a placenta involved when, when humans or animals give birth for the first time. Okay. The placenta is, is covers the newborn. Okay, so not covers, but you, you're this on the part, right track. Right, is involved in so, the whole birth process. Right. So the placenta is that organ that attaches the baby to the mother, to the mother. during pregnancy. So that's how full nutrients okay. flow. Okay, so the nutrients, oxygen, they're going to get to the baby mm -hmm. through, through the placenta. The placenta right. So the baby is actually connected to the placenta via the umbilical cord. So that mm -hmm. umbilical cord attaches, it's attached to the baby. That's mm -hmm. what um, your navel Right, your and navel that's is. normally cut. Right. right. So that attaches the placenta to the mother. So there's an exchange of materials. So both the good materials and the bad materials. So nutrients and oxygen, they mm -hmm. would get into the baby and any waste that the baby produces would then go to the, the go into the mother's blood. So an exchange goes on in the placenta. So the placenta is like the life support, life support system for, for the baby. Mm -hmm. That's how the baby gets nourished during pregnancy. One mark, full mark. <laughs> you're lucky, you're lucky. <laughs> Anyways, 
Okay, so your next word is trachea. 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 This related to the throat by chance? Okay, uh, some connection. Is it, invo is, is, is it, it involves the throat? Is it a connection between like the throat and the lungs? Well, he, he, he got, he got it. So the trachea is also known as the, the windpipe. Mm. So this is that passage where that two that you right. said connects the throat, connects the throat to, the lungs. to the lungs. So air is going to pass through the trachea to get to the lungs. Mm -hmm. Right. So another one, right? Okay, your next word is arthropod. Arthropod. Okay, this part of the, the animal kingdom mm -hmm. is one of the groups. Mm hmm. Arthropods. I'm trying to remember exactly which okay, type so of animal. Okay, so give me an it. example of an arthropod. So you said it's part of the animal kingdom, it's a group in the animal kingdom. Right. But I'm trying to remember. I know they're myriapods mm -hmm. and they're, you know, crustaceans and stuff like that. But well, look at him spurting up all the different classes. But the anthropods, I know they're type, they're part of the right. animal you, system. You don't have to explain any further. I know. You know, I tried, <laughs> I tried to remember one. You wanna, you wouldn't have to drink for that. You, I'll give you that. No, sir, right. I'm safe. I'm safe, folks. In this he's one, he's safe. He's safe. So I'm the safe. arthropod is a phylum in the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. So it consists of four different classes of animals. We have the insects. The myriapods, as we talked about, the crustaceans, crustaceans. and the arachnids. arachnids right. So, and insects is actually the largest group in the arthropods. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, so the next word is... I believe you should get this one. Omnivore. Omnivore. Okay. He always watches the... a lot of National Geographics. Oops, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> well, omnivore is, I can say, start by saying it is not a carnivore and it's not a herbivore. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a mixture of both. Um, omnivores eat both plants and meat. Okay, you got it. So an omnivore is any organism, any animal that feeds on both animal and plant mm -hmm. matter. So that was an easy one. I said I would have slipped that easy one in there so it'll save your, a quick, your throat. A quick mark. A quick mark. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Zygote. Whoa. This is a foreign word. Zygote. <laughs> zygote. Zygote. Is this type of a goat? Just kidding, folks. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said zygote. No, it's not a type of goat. Okay, Larry, let me get my real guess now. Zygote. Um, I should give him one chance and one chance only. You wasted that chance. Zygote is part of the... I don't know. It's, it's matter. <laughs> what? Cell is a cell. It's okay, honey. Just, just, just I've grab, a, just grab a hold of the glass and I've prepare to drink. I've never heard of that word. Never. <coughs> Sounds like she'd be drinking some cayenne pepper. <laughs> okay, a zygote is actually the combination of a sperm and an egg. So in other words, a fertilized egg. So remember we talked we mentioned fertilization in the previous video. So when an egg is fertilized by a sperm, a zygote is formed. So then that zygote will oh. undergo a lot of cell division to produce the embryo. Oh, which I was going to ask you what exactly, the baby. That, what exactly does the zygote do? Right, so the zygote is like the, the early, early stages of a baby. So it's like, can you give a range like up to what, how many weeks or up to how many months? But it's literally when when the sperm fertilizes mm. the, the so egg. Is, so that uh, conception stage. Oh, so basically, so the zygote minutes. will then divide into lots of cells through a particular type of cell division, mitosis. So that produces the embryo, which will then implant into the uterus, and then that signals you are actually pregnant. So that is when you're really pregnant. 
So just mm-hmm. because an egg is fertilized doesn't necessarily by mean, a sperm mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be pregnant. That embryo has to implant, it has to be embedded into the uterus. So then that is when pregnancy officially begins. Okay. So you're learning a little bit about <laughs> learning pregnancy. A lot. Okay, so moving on. Wait a minute. Did you drink? <laughs> You see, he wants me to do the explanation first, so I You're supposed to be keeping track. That he has to drink. drink. <clears throat> well, that, that one hit a spot just now. Remember, the benefits. The benefits. I got okay. this, I got this. Okay, your next word. Progesterone. Pro- progesterone. 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 Is this something for, found within females? Mm. Like egesterone and. You? <laughs> I know there's a lot of raws, progesterone. <laughs> okay, so, so, okay, what, what is it? You say it's found in the females, so what? Is it? I'm trying to find the technical word. Oh boy, the technical. Um, hmm. So what does what it what does it do? What what is it? So is it's it, found in the females. No, no, some people say, oh, the females have estrogen as well. Okay, estrogen. Right. So you said progesterone. Pro- Those are hormones. Hormones, right, within the female. Right. So, so, so progesterone is that particular hormone released in the ovary of the female after ovulation. Mm-hmm. Remember that word? Remember what yes, ovulation, ovulation is? Yes, ovulation, yes. So the release of the egg from the ovary. So the, the progesterone ovary. levels actually increase following ovulation in preparation for pregnancy. pregnancy right. So it really targets the woman's uterus and prepares it for possible pregnancy. So it thickens the uterus make it more vascular, more blood cells, more um, blood vessels. So really preparing for possible pregnancy if that egg is fertilized. Uh Uh-huh. So yeah. So I got a half mark. Drink. I got a a half mark. (laughs) Okay, you you pass on that one. Got a half mark. His poor throat must be burning up. No, it's not. It's fine. Mm. Your next word is... Stomata. So I got that one right. We're moving on. Stomata. Um, stomata. This sounds plantish. Plantish? Hmm. Like some area of the plant. The stoma. Stomata. Okay, the, the stomach. Is it, a, is it a stem? Like a stem? <laughs> no, it's not the stem part, but you know, it's, it's somewhere along those lines. Okay, so you're part you're of correct. the plant, you know, part of the plant area, but I don't know the exact location. Okay, so he's correct in saying that it's part of the plant, and you even mentioned the singular version which, of the right, word. Which is stoma. So stoma, one, stomata, the plural. So stomata are just the tiny openings or the pores that you find in the surface of the leaves. So you have the upper and the lower epidermis. So that's where you will find the stomata. So they allow for gaseous exchange. So oxygen and carbon dioxide can get in and out of the the cells of the leaf. So that's important, especially for photosynthesis and transpiration. So water vapor is also lost from the stomata. Okay. Yes. Quickly becoming my student, folks. You're gonna have to start a, a new series teaching my hobby biology. Thanks. So let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in seeing that me doing a series teaching hobby biology. So the next word is symbiosis. Symbiosis. Oh, this is long. These long big words. Symbiosis. <laughs> long big words. It's not symbiosis. that big. Symbiosis. <laughs> Hmm, this looks like one I'm going to have to pass. He's not even giving it an <laughs> attempt. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, let me say that it's... Some type of process involved with 
with plants? Not quite. Well, no. <laughs> okay, so symbiosis is is the interrelationship, the close association is this like mitosis? between. No, honey, it's not mitosis. <laughs> I said, is it like mitosis? <laughs> Nothing to do okay. with mitosis, folks. Nothing. Okay, symbiosis. Stop interrupting um, the explanation, you know? Students need to listen to the I don't even know what mitosis is. <laughs> Anyways, symbiosis is that close association between two organisms, usually of different species. So they usually would depend on each other for maybe nu nutrients or home protection, whatever the case may be. So there are actually three different types of symbiosis. There's mutualism, where both of the organisms benefit. Mm -hmm. Maybe benefit. And so then... the next one will be commensalism, where only one benefits, but the other is not harmed. The other is not benefiting. Oh. So that's commensalism. And then there is parasitism, where one is benefiting and the other is being harmed. Oh. So we certainly don't want those type of so, relationships, folks. One part is where two are benefiting. Right. And then the other part is where one is benefiting and the other isn't. Mm -hmm. And then where one is benefiting and the other one is being harmed. Exactly. Okay. So parasitism is the worst type of relationship you could ever want to be in. <laughs> right? Got it? Got it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> have to remind him that he has to drink. Hmm. She's waiting for me to cough. I'm not going to cough. Yet. Okay, so that ends round one, the biological terms. So let us move on to round two. True or false? False. Okay, so your first true or false question. The egg is the largest cell in the human body. The egg? So the egg from the female. Remember, the of course, sperm is of course, the egg. the egg has to come from the female. <laughs> well, you were like the egg. <laughs> What's but that? I was wondering. You're not talking about was, the egg you fry and scramble. <laughs> of course not. I was just wondering how come you start you started with the egg. But anyways, hmm. simple, is true, or egg? false? False. That is incorrect, folks. The egg is indeed the largest wow. cell in the human body. Interesting. And the sperm is the smallest. Is the smallest. So isn't oh. that interesting? The largest and the sperm is smallest. Yep. Mm, quite interesting. Okay, so the next one. The heart has three chambers. So the chambers, this is where the blood flows through. So the heart has three chambers. But oh, wait a minute. We forgot to, to let him drink. Let's leave about three seconds Well, he drinking. could as well drink this toy because he seems to not know this, this second one. I'm going to drink one and think the other one. Hmm. The heart has three chambers. True or false? Any day True. Now. Incorrect. Oh boy, I was gonna <laughs> say a fault, but the heart has four chambers. So we have two upper chambers known as the atria. So when you have two upper chambers, because I'm sure and, you have a lower chamber. Right. I'm getting into that, right. student. Yeah. And the two lower chambers are called the ventricles. So it's just the the holding places where the blood would go through when the heart is pumping. So it's not like it stays, the blood doesn't stay so these, in these, these, these chambers. These ventricles are apart from the valves. Right, so the valves separate the atria from the ventricles. So remember we talked about the valves to right. prevent backflow? Well, the valves will separate the atria and the ventricles. Okay, here we go again. He's going to be so healthy mm. when he's done this, this test. <sighs> Any mucus down his throat will vanish away into thin air. Okay, so 
Okay. Question number three. A baby skeleton has more bones than an adult skeleton. True or false? <laughs> false. <laughs> You're incorrect again. <laughs> wow. Interesting. So the baby, so the baby skeleton bone. is actually composed of more bones than the adult skeleton. So a typical adult skeleton consists of 206 bones. You want to guess how many bones the baby skeleton consists of? More than 206. <laughs> it's probably you 226. Well guess? No. 300. Approximately 300 bones. So why does the baby have so much more bones and the baby is so much smaller? Okay, I'm glad you asked that question. So, so the bones in the baby skeleton they eventually will fuse together as after birth and as it gets older. So that's why we as adults would have less bones than the baby. And most of the baby skeleton is actually made up of a, a bone-like tissue called cartilage, but it's definitely more flexible. So more, more bones in the baby and more cartilage in the baby. So a lot of the bones will fuse together as the, the after birth and as the baby gets older. Uh huh. So, so three wrong. So do animals have the like, gristle? You know, gristle. <laughs> of course they right, do. Gristle, the, right, that's what I'm saying. The cartilage is actually the the gristle. Right, because it reminded me of chicken. Of, of a chicken bone. Yeah, it's like right. the, the bone, the, the gristle. gristle. He likes to, right. So to devour. So the gristle. <laughs> so and but we as human beings, do we have gristle? Yes, we do. Right. Cartilage is found in between all of our bones. Okay. To prevent friction and to absorb shock. Yeah, she doesn't eat gristle. She doesn't like part to the bones for some reason. I'm not a dog. Why, why would I want to eat <laughs> the bone or the, the gristle? It's food. I want the meat. <laughs> it's food. You're the meat and the gristle, you're missing, you're missing the... I'm not missing anything. The whole thing. Moving on smartly. Come on, try and get at least one refill. of these. Try and get at least one of these right, man. Yeah, refill. Okay, the next question. Question number four. Urine contains similar components to sweat. Hmm. Think about it. True or false? Sweat. Well, these are level three questions. Yeah, I, I for kinda sure. I kinda She raised it up a notch from the last <laughs> video. No, she actually raised it up two notches. Cause she's, we were in level one in the last video, now we're up to level three. But the whole point of that is so, so he would be healthy and have all the cayenne pepper let's, benefits. Let's see how we do with these level three questions. So true or false, mm. urine contains similar components to sweat. True. Okay, you got it. And that's probably just a well guess. You see, with this true or well, false, you can guess. I had to think. <laughs> Alright, so the urine actually contains water, <clears throat> salts, and a waste I was called when water had to be in there. Water has so to be in sweat there. also contains the same components, just in different proportions. So that smell that you get from the urine, you know, the pissy, sm <laughs> the pissy smell, you can sometimes get from a person sweat, you know, the sunlight, you know, sweat does not smell very good. So is the is most of the time the urea part of the urine and the sweat. But that smell that's doesn't that, that, that doesn't funky that, odor. But doesn't that always uh, also come from what the person drinks or eats? The smell. Well, that can contribute to right, it. That, right, I was going to say that that may contribute to but, it. But yeah, because obviously some person's body odor, sweat will smell worse than others. It's just the genetic, the whole makeup of the individual would, would differ from person to person, but generally speaking, urine and sweat, they have basically the same constituents. So, yeah. Okay. So you got that one right. We cannot feel pain in our brain. We cannot feel pain in our brain. True or false? False? That is incorrect. Wow. It's actually true. So a lot of people don't know this, but there are no brain, there are no pain. <laughs> there are no pain receptors in the actual brain tissue. 
Mm. There will be pain receptors in the membrane that surrounds the brain and that you know the blood vessels are surrounding the brain and also in your, your scalp region but in the actual brain tissue there are no pain receptors. You can't technically feel pain in the brain. <laughs> well, that's remarkable. I thought you could it feel is. pain anywhere in the body. No, so there are no pain receptors there. So that's why surgeons can actually perform surgery on someone's brain and they may still be awake. Wow, okay, interesting. Refills here. <laughs> Drink her up. <coughs> Ooh. He coughed. He said he is not going to cough. And he coughed. I said that last time around. When you last were, time around. When you, you were waiting for me to cough, but I didn't cough. <laughs> I think she added more to the concoction went off off the ear or something. Anyways, remember, cayenne pepper has health benefits, boosting your immune system. We need to boost of that immune system. You know, we gotta protect ourselves against COVID. You added more cayenne pepper to the concoction. Moving on smartly, ligaments are thick strands that connect muscle to bone. They connect muscle to bone. True. Whoa, I, I, thought <laughs> the ligament, right. I thought the ligaments connect. They do connect, the they do connect, but that's a tricky thing. I know it was tricky because I know it connects. I know the ligaments connect something. It does not connect muscle to bone. It connects bone to bone. There you go. Oh. I'll let you pass since you since you actually oh. answered. I, you gave the correct. I know it was bone to bone because when I hear muscle to bone, I was right. like a little iffy, but I know it connects something for sure. Right. So the ligaments connect the bone to bone to provide stability and prevent any dislocation from occurring. Well, tendons, they connect muscle to bone. So to facilitate movement mm -hmm. at a joint particularly. So that is the difference. So Don't help, get them help with mobility. Up. Right, so the tendons, remember muscles are there to help with movement. Mm -hmm. We technically cannot move our bodies without muscles. So the muscles, particularly at the joints, they'll be connected to the bones via tendons. Mm -hmm. So the ligaments, they attach bone to bone. Right. So you don't want your bone dislocating. So that's the whole purpose of the ligaments. So keep them connected at the joint. Keep the bones connected. That's where, where two bones meet, a joint. Right. So the next one, and you should get this. If, should. If he does not get this one, he's drinking that entire glass. Whatever was remaining from that glass. That was not discussed and agreed with me. Well, I'm changing up the rules here, folks. Yeah, it's too late to change. It's too late. Anyways, he's going to get this one, so there may be no need to too worry about to that. to change the rules. Because we actually kind of talked about this already. So, the question is, well, the statement, the statement is, the stomach is very alkaline or basic. True or false? The stomach is very alkaline. False. Okay. Because the stomachs have acids. There you go. So right. just check it and make sure he remembers. See, I, I, I still got that part. If you got this wrong, I got not it. only would you have had to drink the balance of, of that cayenne pepper water, he would get a good lash. <laughs> I wonder who would be giving me that lash. I don't know. Anyways, I got it right. I'm the teacher, so I'm supposed to be sharing right. all the lashes. I got it right, so no lashes and no drinking. Anyways, so yes, the stomach is very acidic because it contains hydrochloric acid. acid. Mm -hmm. So hydrochloric acid gives it the acidity. And that helps with digestion as well as fighting off any, any pathogens that get into the stomach. So if you eat some food and you have a little bacteria or viruses, the stomach acid can actually help to... Um, destroy those pathogens. Mm. It may not always happen, it may not always be effective, so you know we get food poisoning sometimes. So, yeah, I've heard the term acid reflux, is that connected to if the stomach has in too much acid? Well, acid reflux, so there are these spinster muscles that would be found at the, it's kind of the top of the, the, the stomach 
the bottom of the esophagus. Mm -hmm. So when that acid starts, you know, I don't want to say boiling up, but if that moves up and it goes back up into the esophagus, that is what can cause acid reflux. So you'll feel like, like a kind of burning mm -hmm. in the chest. So that's what it calls also, heartburn. There you go. So right. it's also known as heartburn. Right. So it's just like the stomach acid is getting up into the, the esophagus. Yeah. Okay, so you got that one right. The next question, males determine the sex of the baby. Yes, that is true. All right. Because we produce the Y chromosome. Okay, okay, right. okay. We, males produce the Y chromosome, thus we determine the sex of the baby. Okay, so we know females, they have X, X chromosome. So only X's are produced by the females. While the males, they have the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. So if the sperm carrying the Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, mm -hmm. then automatically that child will be a, a boy. But if the sperm carrying the X, X chromosome fertilizes the egg, then it will be a girl. Mm -hmm. right. So you got it. Yep, got it. No drink and no lashes. <laughs> okay, so the last question. The pancreas produces both hormones and digestive juices. The pancreas produces both hormones and digestive juices. Let's see if we're gonna finish off mm. on a cool note instead of a hot one. Hmm. <laughs> He's taking too long. False. <laughs> <laughs> so the I tell pancreas. You, these are trick questions. The pancreas actually produces both. So the pancreas has two functions. So the pancreas produces hormones. So this is with the this will be the endocrine function of the pancreas. So the hormones insulin and glucagon. You've heard of insulin before. Uh -huh. and glucagon you may not be familiar with the glucagon but so insulin and glucagon they help to regulate the blood glucose you said glucagon levels. i was thinking of glucose <laughs> <laughs> lots of students think of that but it's, it's connected because remember the insulin and the glucagon they're they're controlling the levels of glucose in the blood mm. so if you have too much glucose in your blood that's when insulin is going to be produced by the pancreas mm -hmm. to help reduce the levels. So diabetics have too much... Right, so there's a problem with the, the, the insulin performing its job. So normally a diabetic would have high blood glucose concentration because the insulin isn't working, it's not um, effective. Mm -hmm. So yes. So I... glucagon would, would be produced in the opposite case. Right. So if there's not enough glucose in the blood, then the glucagon hormone will be produced to help raise so what the levels if you of have glucose. Too much, if you have too much glucose in the urine, is that connected oh, to Oh no. It? Glucose in the urine, that is a sign yes. of diabetes. Diabe oh, okay. So that's one of the main signs of diabetes. So yeah, so if glucose is found in the urine, mm -hmm. that's even, not even, a good even if it's a small amount? Well, usually Please. no glucose at all should be found oh. in the urine. Mm. And you would understand that if you know the whole process of urine formation. So that, <laughs> that will be discussed another time. But yes, so that's the hormonal function of the pancreas. And then of course the pancreas produces the digestive juices with the enzymes to help break down, digest the food. Mm -hmm. So the starches and fats and proteins. Fats and oils. Uh... Right. So two functions of the pancreas. So keep that in mind. You have the endocrine function, which is the hormonal, mm -hmm. producing the hormones to help regulate the, glu the glucose. And then there is the, the digestive function. Right, where the digestive juices help to digest, to digest the food. Right. Okay, so... So I ended on a hot note. <laughs> So since there is this And he's going to drink all of it. I'm Come gonna, on, be a man and drink all of it. 
Since she would say so because she's not the one drinking it. So, is he going to drink all of this? Oh, no. <clears throat> you okay? I think I, I, might be turning, <laughs> I might be turning the same color as I am purple. Well, thanks for playing along. Well, that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. And I want to thank Kevin for being a good sport. <laughs> And I think after this, I'm going to have some burning questions. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so thank you all for watching. I hope you found this both entertaining and most importantly, educational and that you learned something from this video. So until next time. Until bye. next time. Bye, y'all.